And Cody gets the pin. Roman outside the ring looks at Cody. He nods. Place goes nuts. We got a new mega powers. We do. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. So it's Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan. Tragedy befalls Rhea when she suffers a separated shoulder. Not the last time we'd see a shoulder injury on the show. I swear to God, there were seven matches on the show, and in five of them, they did this exact same spot. Mm -hmm. Thrown into the corner, sell the shoulder for half the match. Dom pulls Liv to her feet. He gives her a big old smooch, and Rhea's heartbroken. The story of this show was the end of the Judgment Day. Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn. They did not go out there to have a great match. They went out there to give Braun Breaker a dominant win. Five minutes. Yeah. Thunderous booze for Logan Paul here in Cleveland and probably most places, actually. Logan Paul is very, very good at pro wrestling. You don't have to like him, but as far as doing this job here, bringing on entertaining wrestling matches, he's incredible. Jeff is in the crowd, one of Logan Paul's associates, which made Michael Cole as excited as as I think I've ever heard him on commentary. Kick the hell of the idiot Jeff! Kick his ass! I'm not the biggest fan of Nia Jax. I think we all know that. But I am a fair man, and I will say that she is in the best shape that I may have ever seen her in in WWE, and her work, I feel, is better than it has ever been. I found reaction to this to be very polarizing online. Yes. You know, this is one of the big differences between WWE and AEW, and that is that in AEW, when someone gets hurt, the storyline just stops. It just stops. Like, they're off TV until they can come back. CM Punk got hurt in January, and him and Drew continued their feud for eight months. When they first got in the ring and stared each other down, this fucking place was going crazy. Like, finally, we're going to see these guys fight. That tells you what a great job they did with this story. Punk trolled him and trolled him and trolled him. Punk was totally the heel in this feud as far as I'm concerned. And then finally, Drew got a hold of his bracelet. Punk was completely gotten to, to the point where he couldn't concentrate on the match. He only cared about his stupid bracelet, and he paid for it. And then, after getting beaten, Drew took the bracelet back. Drew McIntyre is the lineal AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Is he now? I mentioned that on the board and on Twitter. Like, nobody gives a shit anymore. Like, nobody cares. When we were kids, that had been like, holy fuck. Drew McIntyre is a lineal AEW champion. Can you fucking believe it? It was a big Now deal. no one cares. A different age, one of the screens shows a replay of Finn screwing Priest. He turns around loudly, you little Irish gobshite. Gunther is the world heavyweight champion. My favorite guy in the company is a world champion. Yes. You'd think I'd be ecstatic about this. But the whole way it unfolded, he was charitably the third wheel. Cody stops to take his dog for a walk. No better time than to walk the dog than before you go after your main event fight. Stops along the way to say hi to Uncle Arn. I was hoping Arn would mention his Glock again, but no. Every single person in the building knew nothing is going to happen until the bloodline comes out. Tama Tonga and Tongaloa hit the ring. Kevin Owens rushes to the ring, makes his big return, and then they hit Randy's music. And so he jogged calmly down that long-ass aisle, and he's high-fiving fans. <laughs> we need to hey! This. What's going on, guys? It's yeah. a big, giant NFL football stadium. Oh, yeah. I was told that Jacob Fatu is injured. Mm-hmm. This it's was true. told to me like 10 seconds after it happened. He came off the top, big splash, putting Cody through a table, immediately grabbed his ankle. Roman Reigns music hit. And probably in all seriousness, there have never been this many happy people in that specific NFL stadium. Yes. Bro. Says a lot about the Browns, but... Like, they screamed so loud that the mics were all weird. You could hear it. It was just like this weird noise because they were peaking, like, all of these... It was just... They were fucking so crazy when this guy showed up. And Cody gets the pin. Roman outside the ring. Looks at Cody. He nods. Place goes nuts. We got a new Mega Powers... We do. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. I thought this show was excellent overall in terms of booking. Good SummerSlam, I would say. What will be your favorite host's Olympic sport? Craig Prober will be a dual gold medalist in competitive carpentry and almost telling dirty jokes. 
almost telling dirty jokes. Mm -hmm. He tells a lot of dirty jokes. No, actually, I don't. That's up to you. No, you tell plenty of dirty no, jokes, no. and no, you, no, you try you to it. hide it very well. I'm no idiot, Craig. Eh, that's debatable. <laughs> if he Craig. shaved his head, I just noticed. I got a very short haircut. Yeah, you uh, didn't see that? Yeah. I, obviously, I just did. I mentioned it. Yeah. I noticed I didn't want to draw attention to it. Yeah. I thought maybe he had a horrible accident. And I got a very short haircut. A horrible accident? Yeah. <laughs> You're a I, terrible person, Craig. I can only imagine the video cells we're generating now. As people <laughs> click up to yeah, just how horrible my to... haircut is. I've been having trouble with my computer again. I watched SummerSlam. <laughs> where, daily. Where, hold on a second. Hold on a second, Granny. How long All has right. she been frozen and nobody noticed? Like a minute. Jack seemed to have lost a few pounds but still has a big rear end and used it at every chance. Ripley and Morgan mm. with yes. Dom Dominic on the outside. Yeah, this creep. Name the quadratic formula. Was it the denomination? Denominant? <laughs> dip, dip. <laughs> what? In the quadratic formula oh, god was it the denominator i i didn't get that one at let's, sure let's, didn't. let's skip this one <laughs> name the director of the 1994 film pulp election pulp election <laughs> pulp election <laughs> bobby heenan and gorilla monsoon are the greatest duo of all time lanny poffo wrestled the red demon Did in a match that may still be going on so they're wrestling and they're wrestling and they're wrestling thank god this is finally fucking over and they go back to the studio and you know the things behind him and both the, both the guys are looking like this and gorilla turns around he's a baby face by the way <laughs> lanny poffo's a baby face gorilla turns around and he goes Why didn't you do that move 16 minutes ago? <laughs> I'm fucking dying. He was, he was so disgusted. Quick note on this dynamite number. I don't know, man. This number was not good. Hmm. I realized it went up against the Olympics and everything. It opened at 822,000 viewers, right. which is great. And then it fell to 732. It lost almost 100,000 viewers during that match. And then it lost another 100,000 viewers. Those first two quarters saved this show because once that turnoff happened in the first half hour, this show averaged like 575,000 viewers for 90 minutes and uh, probably about a point eighteen maybe in, in 18 to 49. So I don't know what happened. I have never seen a collapse like that and uh, not good. But, you know, the Olympics were on head-to-head, -head, so we'll find out more next week because there will be no Olympics head-to-head. -head. MJF versus Kyle Fletcher. Capital G, great pro wrestling here. I don't have high hopes for what they do next with Kyle. Let's we'll just put it that way. They're, they're... But he, they made a star out of him in two weeks. Yeah. And, you know, they should do something with him. Agreed. I don't think they're going to. Agreed. We had a Jack Perry video package, and I regret to inform you all that I watched the West Coast feed of this. So they fixed it where he was interrupted by a Taco Bell commercial. The exact point where he said everything in life has a price, they went to Chalupa's three ninety nine. dollars <laughs> yeah, I, I did not get that on the West Coast. That sounds like perfect comic. Jim Ross returns to television, doing a sit-down interview with Swerve Strickland. Jim's had a lot of health problems lately. I heard from people in the company that were like, man, I can't believe they put JR on TV like this, and it was sad, and this and that, but that's what JR wants to do. Camille versus Jasmine Howe. And Clara Carter. <laughs> and they cut to these two women. Requested somebody make a gif of this. Tim, TP3 underscore is underscore VIP on Twitter. Made me this gif, and I'm very, very happy he did. Jasmine Howe, she's standing there slouching. <laughs> hands clasped. Head just down. And then she realizes she's on camera. So she releases her hands clasped and like half stands up, but not all the way. And her eyes like half asleep. And they introduce her name. And she looks towards the camera, but not at it. And without opening her eyes, raises her eyelids. That much. And Clara Carter is there. She's not much better. She tries to get some claps going. That's a 
double thumb up. They look beyond miserable. <laughs> They're forced here at gunpoint they to come out. so sad. And be on TV. I laughed. I laughed. I laughed. I believe I legitimately watched this a dozen times. Mercedes is a promo when Tony Schiavone interrupts, and he says, in this order, I just heard from Christopher Daniels, Christopher Daniels, who tells me that Tony Khan has overruled the EVPs and lifted Brit suspension. I hope you were as angry as I was. I would say, without question, the worst storyline in the history of AEW. At no point ever were the EVPs in charge of AEW until Tony Khan got beat up, the EVPs were going to run the show in his absence. Three weeks later, this dude is back. Tony's back. He's fine. Everything's all right. Well, now the EVPs are still making horrible decisions, heelish decisions. Tony does nothing about it. Well, now the EVPs made a decision, but Tony has now overruled the EVPs. None of this makes any sense. It has not been explained. We don't know who has what power, when or why. It's just a mess. The resurgence of Jeff Jarrett is the most pleasant surprise in reporting 56 years old dude and they did not do a slow match oh no no they went at a good solid clip and he was in there the whole time he did a great job i did several weeks ago have somebody there tell me that they were discussing what to do with pete dunn because his partner got hurt and one of the ideas was he would be in the title picture in nxt so if he beat trick williams because he is next in line for the nxt title I still don't like it, but fine. But if he's not going after Ethan Page, why in the fuck did he beat Trick Williams clean in the middle of the ring? I don't know, man. I just, I was not blown away by this match. Tatum is not a bad worker. Her gimmick just totally sucks. Tatum sneaks under the ring and Kalani goes to find her, but it's a voodoo doll. And so she sells for the doll. She sold for a doll. See, that's where I thought you were going to And then, and then she gets that. attacked. And then Wendy Chu's out there, who's got as bad a gimmick as Tatum. Actually, Tatum's is worse. And I just did not like any of this at all. They've done everything they can to get Joe Henry as over as they can with the TV time. Except on day one. Except for day one. Since yes. that point. Yes. They have done everything to get make it to make him a big deal. This Kendall Gray, holy smokes. She's been wrestling for three months. Hmm. She had the most incredible deep arm drag. A Jack Briscoe arm drag oh on my TV my and developmental in 2024. God. Holy Christ. I got signed in September, and the first superstar I met was Matt Bloom. Or as I know him, Lord Tensai. <laughs> I felt so fucking old. And I legitimately completely forgot Lord Tensai had been a thing. He was nine. He was nine years old when he met Tensai somewhere, and they still had the photo. So it's MSK versus Nathan and Axiom. My favorite act. The Rascals. Yeah, I've heard. They pull him to his feet, and Trey Miguel looks like he's going to cry. And they may have actually cried, because then Wes super kicks him in the face. Yes. Wentz is appalled. What are you doing? He's her brother. And so Wes hauls off and boots Wentz in the nuts. Wentz is crying even more than I was. Part of the reason I like the Rascals so much is because they took Wes Lee, who I hated watching, and made him fun to watch. Yes, he was happy. He was joyous. Well, I hope you all enjoyed Wes Lee being entertaining, because he's probably going to suck now. I believe the main event was booked purely to troll me and myself alone. You must have said something mean about somebody. And it, it worked. I am gotten to. Yeah. I am gotten to. <laughs>